Good evening, good evening and welcome along to another big music show here on NVTV. Coming up on the show this week, we'll have music from Zeal. We'll have local band Red House and starting things off, a man who's part of a band called The Hard Chargers. But today, he's going solo. So starting things off, here is Lonesome Chris Todd. So that's a song called Red Lion Yard from a lonesome Chris Todd who joins me now in the studio. Chris, how are you, sir? I'm not too bad, Roman. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So there's an interesting story behind that song you just played there, isn't there? Yeah, Red Lion Yard was written at a time when I basically uh, ran out of money and uh, had to live in my van in a car park in Blandford Forum in Dorset for a week. Um, I had went over to play music with Billy Boy Miskimmon, which was great fun, and uh, Billy and I are still great friends, and in fact I've just played with him recently at the Woodstock Blues Festival, uh, but uh, I hadn't really planned it very well before I went, and um, the money ran out, couldn't get myself into a job and so on, and uh, this car park seemed secluded enough for me to be able to kind of hide away and, um, and uh, wonder what to do next really, plan my next move, and um, out of that then poured out this song called Red Lion Yard. Yeah. So it must have been a pretty scary time in your life then. It was, yeah. It was uh, terrifying because I knew that I had given up my work teaching, guitar teaching work that I'd had here. Uh, I knew I would be coming back. I wouldn't have a job. I wouldn't have a place to live. Um, it, it was all very, it was a, a very, uh, a time of great upheaval, you know, for me, for me personally. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm still standing. 
Tell us about you then. You mentioned there you were teaching guitar and stuff. Obviously, yeah. playing the guitar and the blues, I know, has been part yeah. of your life all, all, always. Hasn't yeah, it? that's right. I've been playing the blues since I was about 15. Now, I've been playing guitar for since I was about 12, so for about 20, 25 years now. And um, I've been playing blues for most of that time. Um, even when I have dipped into other genres at times, I played with Doghouse, the ska band around Belfast. I played with the Afresh band with Gabriel Macamanzi around uh, Ireland, North and South as well. Um, and uh, I've served my time in, um, in a couple of uh, covers type bands and, and so on. But yeah, it's always been to me about the blues and the story telling the yeah. storytelling aspect of, of the blues has um, been a very important thing. You know. so I suppose you're probably influenced by a lot of the blues artists who came out of Belfast and probably Rory Gallagher as well, weren't you? Uh, yeah, Rory Gallagher would be um, an influence, although it's probably the influences on him are probably as important to me as Rory Gallagher himself is, you know. Uh, you know, there's been, there was a lot of great blues musicians before and since as well, you know. Uh, but it would be uh, hard to grow up here as uh, any type of blues musician and ignore Rory Gallagher. I mean, uh, it just it would be very hard to do. Um, but yeah, a very important, um, very important artist for, you know, for um, for Ireland, you yeah. know, as a whole. Um, and of course, you know, as, as everyone knows, you know, he was one of the only people to still come to Belfast to play uh, in the dark days, you know. Yeah. So a lot of people will know you from the Hard Chargers. Tell us about that band. Uh, the Hard Chargers was a band I established in 2009, um, partly because I thought that there was too many cover bands in the blues scene, uh, that that wasn't really a, a true expression. Um, that you know, the singing about uh, Chicago and Mississippi were uh, seemed pointless to me. I'd never even been there, um, and uh, it seemed like I couldn't. It seemed more important to me that I had to tell my own story uh, as well you know by writing writing songs and stuff and uh, and uh, I thought that there was also something missing as well I thought that there was still room for in, in a band like the Hard Chargers which was a trio format um, and uh, you're playing maybe um, quite viciously you know uh, you know and, and with a lot of speed and energy um, and sort of avoiding a lot of the cliches. Yeah. It felt to me that there were too many bands that had almost or very similar set lists. Um, and to me, that wasn't really the blues. You know, that was just uh, the same as any cabaret act, really. You yeah. Know? And you're being re really re well received across the water in England, I know, since yeah, the, the tour recently, really aren't well, you? Yeah. yeah, it went really well over there. And uh, we had a great time. It was very hard work. You know, it was 1,900 miles in 10 days. Um, so uh, driving a van for that length of time <laughs> uh, was exhausting, you know, I mean, there were times we were maybe driving for five hours. Like I, th I remember the gig in Shrewsbury we did, we had driven for about five hours to get there. We had half an hour to basically check into the B&B, &B, get changed and head straight back down yeah. to find the venue uh, to load in yes, and, yeah. and sign check. Uh, but you know, we had an absolute blast over there. We were well received over there um, on the originality of the sound. And uh, yes, my, my voice is uh, what some people might say is a Marmite voice. But again, it was well received over there because it doesn't sound like anybody else. Um, and uh, that was seen as a plus point in England. And where's good to play in England? Where's the, the best places? The best places? Um, I still haven't played enough places to be able to actually tell you <laughs> that, you know, but um, I, I, I loved the whole, the whole experience, to be honest. And it's uh, the third time now I've, I've, I've ostensibly spent a period of time playing in England. Uh, I was in Dorset in 20, uh, the start of 2017, uh, playing with uh, Billy Moy, Skimmon and Mercy Lounge. Uh, and then in 2004 to 2007, I lived in Manchester for three years. Uh, of course, Manchester is a, a vast city yeah. with an enormous range of mm -hmm. music and musicians, uh, both who live in the city and who pass through. You were always quite welcome, especially in the area I lived in, was very close to Hume and Mossside, yeah. um, which still had quite a bad reputation at that time through um, you know, violence and yes, so on, yeah. gun violence and whatnot. But, um, you know, I, I fit it in just all right there because, uh, you know, people liked the fact that I was just um, some sort of country bumpkin from <laughs> from Ireland, you know, that could come over and, and join in and play um, reggae with the Jamaicans like, and, and play uh, the sort of funky jazz mm -hmm. and stuff and, you know, all the kind of free form stuff that we would do um, around at, um, this uh, old Jamaican guy's shed. Uh, a guy called Wyatt, you right. know, and we'd all just basically spend 
as much time as we could just round it where it shared um, playing music until the sun went down, basically. Yeah, yeah. Until it got too cold to stand in the shed, you know. Um, so yeah, it was a great experience. You know, for, uh, you know England's been a, an important an important place of you know of course I'm from here and mm -hmm. you know spent more time here but England has had quite a lot of importance and uh, maybe changing my opinions at times or providing maybe a, a slightly larger world view yeah, uh, yeah. you know and or a musical view of course yes, you yeah. know and um, so yeah I, I like playing in England and uh, I'm making plans to go back over there again next year excellent okay what about new material uh, there's a lot of new material I'm working on. Uh, Red Lion Yard, of course, is quite new. Um, I've got a few other songs uh, to come. What I'm, I'm keeping for another Hard Chargers album. Okay. I'll be doing an acoustic EP this year before that, uh, which will have uh, two originals. I'm going to do two old uh, favourites of mine, a, a Book of White song and an old Lightning Hopkins song. Um, but the album, uh, I've got a lot of new material that I'm in various stages of completion, you know, um, which hopefully this time as well, I, I think will maybe give an even greater idea of um, of the kind of influences uh, than the Scarecrow album did, yes, which yeah. just came out in January. Um, there's a, like a thing on there uh, called Depth Charge, which is uh, kind of an ode to the like Ennio Morricone and the Spaghetti Western soundtracks, mm, okay. uh, but it, it will still sound like it was played by the hard chargers, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And the scare problem um, picked up some great reviews as well, didn't it? It has done, yeah. It, it has done. Uh, it uh, has mostly because of the unusual aspect, the unusual sound of uh, the unusual mix. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a band that concentrate, for example, on guitar virtuosity or so on. But yet, it does have elements of of that there. It has. It's mostly original as well. You know, there's six original songs and two covers on there. I would highly recommend that, you know, the viewers go out and have a, a look at Scarecrow, which is available on Market Square Music. <laughs> and uh, you can buy it directly from the label, you know. What about gigs coming up? Well, what should we know about? Uh, the uh, most uh, local gig that we have coming up in the, in the next couple of weeks is in Valley Earl in the Courtyard Theatre. Uh, it's on the 29th of September. Uh, doors are at half seven, and the music's from eight. The tickets are £12 or a £10 concession. Uh, that'll actually be the closest gig I've ever done to home. Right. Uh, yeah, it's only maybe about 15 minutes, 10 minutes from Valley Clare. So. And, and for any uh, band, it's a great venue to do because you really are close to the audience. Yes, it's a, it's a lovely uh, intimate venue. I love doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've this this year has has seen me play in a few art centres, um, which has been a new experience in itself, um, but one that I have really enjoyed uh, because you've got an audience in there who have paid to listen, and you're able to maybe spend a little bit of time telling people about the origin of of a song or. Um, you know what condition your life was in at the time the song was written and so on um and uh it, it's it's a nice intimate intimate atmosphere it is unusual i mean my whole life has been spent really i suppose playing in noisy bars and clubs with people you know jam-packed maybe up against you or or even empty pubs you yes, know playing, yeah. to, playing to three or four people you know uh but uh, having art centers where everyone's seated and in between songs you can nearly hear a pin drop you know it's it's, it was uh, unusual at first, yeah. you know, but I've, I've really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to doing that one. Yeah, that's the, the, the next local one that we have coming up. And then we're also doing the Ranfurly House, uh, the Square Box yeah. in Dungannon on November the 3rd as well for anyone in the Dungannon area. I would again highly recommend you come on down and get a dose of the blues, you know. Brilliant. You're going to yeah. do one more before you go. What are you going to do this time? Uh, the next song I'm going to play for you is Dark Horses. Is there a story behind this? Uh, yeah, there is a story behind this. It's, uh, I suppose, um, what might have, what some people might uh, lightheartedly call uh, a kind of a love triangle song, you know. Okay, let's hear it then. Here with Dark Horses, one more time, here is Lonesome Chris Todd. <laughs> Alright. 
Well, I've been living for the day, but it's been 24 and one and one days, and I'm still reminiscing of a time when you were in my arms. My head was swimming in bed today. I'm checking my phone for you, baby, and I'm still believing there's a time that you'll be in my arms. You ever wonder why you can't get through? Cause the do's and don'ts a lot will lay it out for you. And do you ever wonder why I think you care? Cause it's trivial that you'd see a standing there. It's funny that you don't think it's true. But there's nothing on this world that can more for than you. Than you. I've been living for the day, but it's been 24 and one and one days, and I'm still reminiscing of a time when you were in my heart. And do you ever wonder why you can't get through? Cause the do's and don'ts are lot the laid out for you. And do you ever wonder why I think you'd care? Cause the trivial that you'd see is standing there. Funny that you don't think it's true That there's nothing on this world that can more for than you So that's a song called Miss Me from Red House and Kaylin and Dara join me now in the studio. Welcome guys. Tell us first of all the story behind uh, the song then. So to be honest, there's not much of a story behind. You know, I, I wrote that song when I was 15 years old and I've been doing it for a couple of years now. So it's kind of, it's, it's a generic breakup song in many ways, but it's also, it's got our own spin on it. So. so Dara, tell us all about Red House then. How did you all meet? How did you get together? And where did the name of the band come from? I think we've been been through a few iterations of the band since it started. I'm actually the 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 youngest serving member. Um, so yeah, we uh, as this unit we've been playing together for about a year and a half now. Uh, knew each other from playing in different bands and different social circles, and it was one of those ones that we only really knew we knew each other until we started since once we started playing together. Um, but yeah, we've been together for about year and a half uh, writing original music and uh, the name as far as I'm aware is from a Jimi Hendrix song not one that we play but right, it's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so t tell us Kelly then about your influences and stuff who influenced the bands you know at the start I was kind of influenced by blues guys so I'm a big fan of a band from Ireland called Stripes and that was kind of my favorite band when I was 13 14 years old getting into my first uh, kind of musical groups, so I was really into you know the riff based stuff, mm. that kind of stuff. But as I've kept playing and started singing front in the band, um, I've got into indie bands, so stuff like you know Catfish and the Bottle Men and Blossoms, that kind of vibe. Yeah, brilliant. Dara, I'm guessing David Bowie must have been a big fan. Yeah, I mean, how can you not? <laughs> yeah, uh, Bowie. I've got a sort of a jazz and a funk background, so I like to try and put that in. And like when we're writing, we put in bringing stuff from everywhere, but yeah. Yeah, 
Great. Better blues. <laughs> so, Kaylin, the new single is out at the minute as well. It must have been exciting to get that out there and then actually hear your song being played on radio as well. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a mad experience. This is kind of the first the first song I've been involved in where it's been a big build up and you know we were filming a music video for it and we were recording professionally, which is also a first for us as well. Um, it's been a great experience. It kind of contrasts with the first song we were talking about. It's uh, as that first song's a breakup song. This is kind of the the start to a relationship. It's, hence the the name. But uh, yeah, it's been a wild experience. I've loved it. Great, Daryl. What about gigs and stuff coming up? Is there anywhere people can go and see you? Yeah. So uh, the big one we've got coming up is the uh, the twentieth of. Uh, September and that's in 39 Gordon Street with Chisney and that's going to be our official EP launch. Uh, really buzzing for that, we're going to pack that one out. Uh, and then got a couple of dates uh, in just Belfast bars, just playing the usual sort of those late night slots. Um, so you can get all that stuff on our Facebook as, as we update it, but the big one is the is the launch on the 20th. Brilliant. Killing. where would you love to see the bands maybe a year down the line? Wherever it takes us, <laughs> I'd say. Um, I'm really happy doing what I'm doing now. Obviously, we're still in school and stuff, but I would love to see it go as far as it can go, yeah. really. It's a short answer. Great stuff. You gonna do one more song before you go? What are you gonna do for us this time? Uh, Forward, which is the first track on the EP. And is there a story behind this? Kind of the, the, the start of a relationship. Actually, no relationship in particular. It was just kind of, the, the, it was based on the feeling you get when you meet someone, so. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. Well, here we go one more time. This is Red House, and uh, this is called Forward. I've been stuck in a daydream, trying to make something of life. And I know a girl that can steal my world. Day, tomorrow, tonight and She's a mystery from her ripped jeans To her dark clothes and her smile And I've been stuck in a daydream for a while And I said, baby, I know you want to know me And for what it's worth, the love you ever killed me Up this morning smiling on a bright sky begging my way It's been a long time coming but there's something in the air today and See that girl who can steal my world is her again today Her intentions I don't know but today's the day's the day and I said baby I know And for what it's worth, the love you it killed me. To side me up and dress me down, look at me with golden eyes. Cause for what it's worth, I didn't make it all alive.
You're here, she said. You're fine. To pluck and soothe his weary spine. Well, I'll sail. On the ocean someday Oh, just to find Peace in my heart Damn these old blues that rest in my head Well, I'd like to be on horseback instead Walk into the woods to stoop in the shallows. And maybe the trees can grow out of me. So that's a song called Happy Heart, Weary Spine from uh, Zeal. And uh, Patrick from Zeal joins us now in the studio. How are you, sir? I'm very good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for being here. So tell us the story behind that song. Interesting title. Yeah, <laughs> interesting title. Um, I'm not too sure about the story per se. Um, it was a song, it was probably one of the first songs that I'd written as Zeal, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, so it's quite an old one. I wrote that in November 2015, I think. So it'll be its third birthday soon. Um, it's quite somber. I'm, I'm not too sure if it's single worthy, but I'm probably going to be releasing it as a single anyway. <laughs> right. So we are mentioning Zeal. I mean, that's your band that you have as well. So tell us about how that project all, all came, came about. Well, it started, um, I've been writing songs for a long time. Um, probably about four years now. Uh, I started working under the Zeal title for a while because I was always put off by the idea of working under your own name because it's sort of, you know, I always feel like it might limit people yeah. to, you know, and you know, if you ever want to change five, 10 years down the line, people will go, oh, well, that's not your music. Yeah. Um, so I thought I came up with the, the pseudonym. Um, I went from there about four years ago, uh, the band, was a group of people that I met um, in college in the Belfast Met music course. Um, 
couple guys, Calvin Wells, uh, Matt Holland, who play bass and drums, and uh, another friend, Shannon O'Brien, who plays keys and guitar. Um, and they do the music great justice. They're good fun to play with, and they enjoy it, I think, as much as me. So, so is the band still going, or is this you going down a new singer-songwriter type route? No, no, the band, the band still mm -hmm. operates. Um, it's always sort of, it's always been a bit difficult to explain the, 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 the uh, premise of, of the project. Um, I think because the pseudonym itself causes a bit of confusion. Yeah. Um, people always assume that it's a band or that it's, you know, you know, people always kind of have to ask, you know, what is, what is actually going on here? But I suppose it's basically, it is a singer songwriter project just in band format. You know, I'm never really, apart from today, obviously, I'm yeah. never really one to just sit down with just a, just a guitar and myself. So. so what about material? Is there new stuff coming out? There is, yeah. Um, most, of, most of the work has come from 2015, 2016. Recently, in the last couple, um, couple of weeks, I've found myself getting a studio space on the Crumlin Road. Um, me and a friend, Ross Edgar, have been recording some of the material. And it's been great fun, actually, because when I started out in 2015, it was, it was me in my garage. and. I was running around all over the place recording drums one minute and recording guitars the next and then I had all these songs but then they were so low quality that I could never really put them out without you know thinking no oh, I might have wasted these so I've been holding them in my pocket for the last three years and now it looks like they're ready to come out so that'll be good fun. And what about gigs? Can people go and see you perform anywhere? At the moment not yet. I don't have anything scheduled for the moment. Um, I think I'm trying to do something interesting with the with the single releases uh, that I have planned. I've got four songs, um, two, one of which is Happy Heart Weary Spine is going to be a double A side per se, um, with another song, Queen of the Rodeo. Um, and I've got two other songs that I want to release as singles, and with that I want to release little B side tracks like they did in the 60s. Um, right, yeah. yeah, little, you know, songs that will never see the light of day anywhere else. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to promote them with a couple of gigs and then by which stage I'll hopefully have the full album recorded and finished. So was so. 60s music something that influenced you? A little bit, yeah. Like, uh, well, as most people will tell you, I'm a big fan of the Beatles. Um, watched every documentary, listened yeah. to every album, done, you know, all the, all the solo stuff as well beyond that, even the Ringo stuff. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, 60s music, I quite like, uh, 60s music is interesting because even bands like the Velvet Underground and stuff, there's a lot of real gems in the 60s that you can sort of trace um, music from the 90s back to, music from even modern day back yeah. to music from the 80s. There's a lot of, a lot of 60s music was a real turning point in general, I think, so big, big fan of some 60s stuff. And was music something you always wanted to do right from a very early age? Oh, I don't know. I, I think so. Um, my dad's a musician. My dad's, my dad's a drummer. Um, I think I was subconsciously interested in it um, when I was young. I think hearing Nirvana for the first time opened, opened the door to, oh, you can just do it. You yeah. know, there's no rules. There's no, you know, Kirk Cobain did it with, you know, his guitar barely mm -hmm. in tune. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I think when I was about 12, it became something that I was fond of and then when I was about 18, 19, it became something that I realized is possible to do as a life choice. So. And whereabouts would you like to see it going? What kind of direction would you like to, to take it in? Well, I suppose everybody measures success in a different way. Um, I would quite like just to be able to continue doing, making some form of impact on some other people other than myself. Um, and in general, just continue as I'm going. I feel pretty good about you know, being a musician, being a songwriter, so long may it continue. You're going to do one more song before you go. What are you going to do this time? I'm going to do a song called Goodbye. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's probably the oldest Zeal song in the current catalogs, probably May 2015. Um, what it's about, I suppose it's vaguely about a goodbye, okay. considering the title. But a great way to finish the show on, by the way. So, Patrick, thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. And we'll finish the show this week with uh, Goodbye one more time. Here's Patrick from Zeal. When 
she sat on my knee playing tambourine it rang through my ears a jangle in tune or paint the moon the deepest blue Can I jangle too? Sometimes it goes without saying. Well, sometimes it goes. Without saying goodbye, goodbye, and in my black heart, I'm feeling like a cherub does, pure and naive, and all my wounds bled. As I grew higher, now I'm counting every sparrow in a bare winter tree. And then she leaves me without saying. She leaves me without saying goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye.